I had a request from one of my best friends that's just getting into horse training to talk about bit progression through training over the first five or six years of a horse's career. So Luke, this one's for you, brother. As always, if you like the following content, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. One of the reasons I don't think this topic is covered enough uh, is because each horse is going to require custom training approach and a custom training approach, and there's no one size fits all for bits. But in general, this is a roadmap you can follow that I'll share with you today. Now there is a couple of strong caveats to this discussion. Great horsemen do not just leverage the bit, and your horse cannot learn proper movement with the bit only. It requires proper leg pressure, balance, and position in the saddle in addition to the bit. Uh, it should also be noted that in this video, I'm gonna be talking about general timelines for when I run a particular bit. That being said, what bit you use has a lot more to do with when your horse is ready to move through the progression. So with those caveats, let's talk bits. The rope knows hackamore, not even a bit, but over the first five to 10 rides, this is what I start Colts with. Uh, it's a key part of my horse training. This is a practice leveraged by a lot of great horsemen. I'm a big fan of using these in the first few rides because I'm really just trying to get a horse comfortable with me being on their backs. I want them calm. And this also forces me as a trainer to work with soft hands right from the get go. One of my mentors, Scott Hume, he, who is a great horseman, started me down this path now, I actually use a rope nose hackamore throughout my horse's life. I use it when I've laid off a horse for a while or when I'm just warming a horse up sometimes. Uh, and especially when my kids or someone with less riding experience uh, is, is riding one of my horses that doesn't know how to use a bit. Um, so my seven-year-old doesn't get to use a high port bit. So, boom, there's that one. The O-ring snaffle is one of the most versatile bits out there in my opinion. This is the bit I start all my horses with regardless of age. Typically I stick with this through the first couple of years. Now this bit was originally built to teach a horse direction and flexion. That's a rhyme. But over the years we've been a lot better at using this bit uh, and with the correct balance and leg pressure. You can teach a lot of collection. Uh, so rope nose hackamore for the first five to ten rides, o-ring snaffle for the first couple of years. Um, there are of course variations of the o-ring snaffle you can leverage uh, if you have horses that are naturally, uh, that they put a lot of weight on their front end or they have harder mouths. A lot of racing bred horses are this way. You might use a o-ring snaffle or something with a little bit more stopping power, uh, but I always start with a smooth o-ring snaffle bit. The shift from the O-ring snaffle to the D-ring snaffle is slight, and some people don't think this matters, but I think the D-ring snaffle is a great incremental step towards finishing a bridle horse. I will typically only run a D-ring snaffle for about a year after an O-ring snaffle. There's a little bit less play in this bit uh, than the O-ring, but it sets your horse up well for success in the next phase of bitography, which is the correction bit. Now, some people will run a shank snaffle before moving to a correction bit, but I tend to move from the D-ring snaffle to the correction bit. Uh, the correction bit is really the first move cow horse people will use in going to a leverage bit. Leverage bit being one that when the reins engage, the snakes, the snakes don't engage. It's got nothing to do with snakes. Leverage bit. Uh, being one with shanks that engages the chin strap when applying rain pressure. So Bob Avila loves these things. And this is actually a professional's choice. Bob Avila correction bit. It's not the nicest one out there, but it's a great option for the price. Um, the correction bit is also extremely versatile. And this is one that you can run for a really long time before moving into something like a solid port bit. Uh, like the Kerry Kelly O2S66. I don't have any hesitation putting a correction bit back on older horses either. Now, the port or the U shape on the bit will uh, vary depending on your horse. Low port bits tend to be for more finished and broke horses, where medium and high port bits, uh, where the U shape is a little bit longer, take pressure off the tongue, but add additional pressure on the horse's mouth. So. You do have to be really cognizant on those bits of how your horse is moving 
and where your hands are and how your horse is responding to the bit pressure in order to determine which one to use. I would say in general, start with a medium port bit uh, and work on just being really soft with your hands. So these are the headgear setups that I use over the first several years of training a horse. Uh, from here, there's a number of directions that you can go depending on what your horse is comfortable with uh, and how they're really progressing along the way. I tend to move from the correction into the Kerry Kelly O2S 6C6. I think it's a great bit. Um, so that's all we got for you today on Tac Talk. Happy riding and adios.